Welcome to this week's Tin Dog Podcast. This week I'm going to be recording this live as I walk along the street. Yes, it's like some sort of documentary or some marvellous interactive thing. Only less so. Oh, look, a car and somebody thinking I'm talking very oddly into a mobile phone, which of course I'm not. Some of you may have read on the website that I um, had lost my MP3 recorder. I had in fact lost it behind the PC. So I'm recording today's podcast as I walk from work to the car. As you can probably tell, I'm not exactly out of breath, but my voice is exactly not in in tip-top condition. So, this week's show. Well, I'd like to say that, first off, we were talked about on uh, Who Online, which is very nice. They referred to my show as ideal for people with attention deficit disorder. Yeah. Uh, Is that a compliment? I'm going to take it as one anyway. And also the show was described as unique. So well done, you're listening to a unique show. Now, someone also asked how many people listen. Well, the answer is, to be honest, not a lot. Quite a few, more than I thought. But why don't you all do me a favour? Each and every one of you is a Doctor Who fan, and you all know other Doctor Who fans. So why don't all of you recommend me, if you enjoy this podcast, to one of your friends. Just one of them. Go on, you know you want to. Oh, look, a car. Right, let's start this week's episode review. The Sound of Drums. Ah, yes. Episode 12s are usually very good. They do have a certain formula to them. Let's put all the chess pieces in the right position and let's get them to go. But this was very good. To be honest, it was what I've heard described as... Do I say, to be honest, too many times? Or let's face it. Hmm, perhaps we could turn this into a drinking game. Oh, what a surprise, I'm rambling again. Do you think there should be a Tin Tog podcast drinking game? It would be a very short drinking game, let's face it. The episodes only last about ten minutes each. Where was I? Was I busy digressing? I suspect so. Couldn't you hear it? I thought it would stop. It never does. Never, ever stops. Inside my head. Please, let me help. It's everywhere. Listen, listen, listen. Here come the drums. Here come the drums. Welcome back to the Tin Dog Podcast. Obviously, I'm not recording this bit walking down the street. So, to continue my review of this week's episode, The Sound of Drums... Ah, isn't it marvellous? I'd like to thank, before I begin, everyone who's put their face on the Frapper map, which can be found at um, the website www.tin-dog.co.uk. Please take a few moments to turn up and put your little face on the map, and then we can all find out where each other are, and it'll all be marvellous. Conversely, there's another little Frapper map hidden inside the MySpace Tin Dog podcast page, which I'm sure we have, well, we've now got 35 members. Hello, hello, whoever's are the listening? Um, this is the recording for this week's show, and I am sorry it's late. However, I've already covered that, so let's begin. Did you enjoy this week's show? I know I did. And I have heard a phrase mentioned on fandom that kind of sums up what this week's show was. It was canon fodder. It was fodder for the old school fans. I mean... Everyone liked this show, but it is episode 12, so it doesn't have to be as accessible as Ape Master, School Friends, what's going on? Isn't that Stargate? Isn't that, what, isn't that Skybase from Captain Scarlet? All that, that might throw them. But for old school fans, and fans of just this season, it's a nice payoff. Again, it's part two of three, or more likely part one of two. It's the chess game, it's, it's putting all your pieces in place in order to pay off next week. 
which it should do. Now let's look at the episode in itself. Plot-wise, a little bit thin on the ground, but it's got some lovely moments. It's got some lovely history behind it. Now I know some of you aren't as familiar with The Master as you would like to be, so I do intend doing a podcast in a couple of weeks' time just on the history of The Master. But what I thought I'd do is I'd wait until this episode finished, and then if there was any more history to come out about the character, I could incorporate that in. I hope you understand why I'm doing that. So, we've got the Master, who regenerated last week, despite the fact that he really shouldn't be regenerating, but there was a throwaway line this week that the Jenk Gallifreyans gave him back a full set of regenerations, or something along those lines, on the subject of which I'd like to wholeheartedly apologise for something I said last week. I said the Doctor had 13 regenerations. Oh my god, that's like... Oh, it's a terrible faux pas. The Doctor has 13 lives. The Doctor can regenerate 12 times. The logic's in there. It's just you always think of the first Doctor as the first regeneration. But of course, the second Doctor would be the first regeneration. A bit like in England, you go, it's the first floor. But really, in America, that would be classed as the second floor. Because it's the first one above the ground floor. And in America, the ground floor is called the first floor. That's not important. But that you can see why I made the error. I apologise. Given that my notes for recording a show are fairly minimal, mainly to encourage my pointless rambling, I hope you understand. Where was I? Ah, yes. Mr. Saxon is now the new Prime Minister. Now, for those of you living in America, England now has a new Prime Minister as of today, in fact. Tony Blair is going to step down and somebody else who nobody's actually voted for is going to take charge of England. A lot of people aren't particularly chuffed with this. Now, whether this is a parallel with Tony Blair's handover of power, I couldn't possibly comment. Suffice to say that when Harriet Jones was told, isn't she looking a bit tired, was actually one of the headlines about Tony Blair. I don't want to bring any parallels for Russell's politics or anything like that. Let's face it, I don't know Brussels politics at all, but it's nice that we can run parallels. It gives the fans something to talk about, after all. So, England has a Prime Minister that we didn't vote for, and in fictional Doctor Who land, they have a Prime Minister that they voted for because of hypnosis. Yeah, the Angel Network looks fun, but it does look like it's been put there in order to help out next week's story with some sort of jamming signal, or something along those lines. The, doc, the the Masters turned up with a new race of aliens, the Tocrophane, who really aren't called the Tocrophane. That's a made-up name, said the Doctor, so they're obviously something else. Now, somebody mentioned that they look a bit like Suntaran spacecraft. What are they? Mini Suntarans? I don't know. I shall call it Mini Me. No. I've got a feeling there's something else. Now, the Master also said, if you find out what's inside the Tocrophane shells, it would break his heart. There's only a couple of things that would break his heart. And... Are they the new design Daleks? I'm praying they're not. But then again, if Russell's redesigned the Daleks, does he have to pay the nation estate next year? That would upset me. It would disappoint me a little. But also, for me, they're not the Daleks. They're not Cybermen. They're either a whole new race, or they just sound... To me, they sound so much like the Gelf. Little Gelf spacecraft. And when they said there were six billion coming through, I thought, hang on, isn't that exactly how many people there are on Earth? One for each person. So the fact that it would break the Doctor's heart implies that it's an old monster coming back. It's not the population of Gallifrey, because the Master was unaware when he made the deal with Tocrophane that Gallifrey had been completely destroyed. So it does concern me. Of course, there are some lovely moments the master having jelly babies making him more like the old-fashioned doctors and him having a laser screwdriver instead of a sonic screwdriver it's obvious but it's just not been done before so well done for spotting something let's face it everything's obvious once it's been done did you enjoy it i know you enjoyed the episode i know it's got fabulous ratings but again it was putting things into place and let's face it i do say let's face it far too much hmm I know you'll watch next week's. I was going to not bother recording a podcast this week and then next week doing a double, but I felt that was cheating. So, I'll cut this one short. I will get back to you very shortly with a new proper review. And then following the end of this series, 
I will review other things. Oh, one quick word. At 10.30 on, uh, I think, BBC Two on Saturday morning, the complete animated Doctor Who will be shown all the way through. You must record this. And if you're in America, get hold of a copy somehow. It has to be an extra on a disc. It will be fabulous all the way through. I've been watching it an episode at a time. I've created one disc myself, edited, of just that. But it will be great when it's on. So 10.30, BBC Two. Both series of Doctor Who finish on Saturday. If you need to email me, it's tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Be seeing you. Thank <laughs> you.